Good afternoon, folks. Thanks for getting on the stream tonight. I am your host, Charles Chambers, of another stream of Let's Talk About It. Shout out to all my new subscribers on YouTube. Thank you for your continued support. Shout out to my Facebook group members. <sighs> Thank you for your loyal support as well. Shout out to Gail. Shout out to Abdul. Shout out to Althea. Shout out to Lynn. Those are my faithful um, Facebook group members. Shout out to Sheila Stallings. Shout out to all of you that support this platform faithfully. That come on as you can. I know that, hey, life happens. I get it. Life happens. It doesn't stop for me. It certainly doesn't stop for you. But... I think we should get a little more proactive at supporting content that actually means something. And uh, what I find to my sad regret is that a lot of us are just too busy. But the bad news continues to come. The bad reporting continues to come. News platforms, I'm talking major news platforms, uh, the bad news just continues to pour out and we continue to consume such reporting it's funny to me and it's really sad to me that what I'm finding is that so many so many of us don't find the interest can't find the time we either too tired or too sleepy or too busy or simply not interested at all in getting information that actually means something and to me that is sad and tragic that's sad and tragic but tonight i'm excited to share and to celebrate a young lady who is meeting milestones at such a very young age uh i discovered this young lady simply by casually watching an episode of the Price is Right. Just the other day, I'm looking at The Price is Right, and here's this young lady that was called from the audience because they were highlighting those that are considered genius or highly intelligent. And she comes to the front. Not only did she, not only did she get called from the audience to participate in that particular program or that particular episode of Price is Right, but she was actually called up to the stage because the price was right. <laughs> and I'm so glad for just the few three to five minutes that I just so accidentally was looking at the television at that moment. I came across this young lady. She began to explain her accomplishments up to, up to that point, excuse me. And what did I do? I quickly went to Google and I Googled her name and began to research some of the accomplishments that she had achieved. You're talking about a young black woman, young, young lady, not even near, not even a teenager yet. At the time that she graduated college, I'm sorry that she graduated high school. She graduated high school at the age of 12. Now I know many of you that watch this stream, you know what you were doing at 12. I know what I was doing. <laughs> Not too much of nothing. I was doing usually what 12 year olds are doing. It certainly wasn't studying STEM. It certainly wasn't studying uh, to such a degree that it, it would uh, qualify me to do an internship at NASA. No, not at all. Most of us at 12 were silly, like most 12 year olds are. This is an exceptional young black woman who graduated from high school at 12. You would think a subject like this would go viral, but I will tell you something that's so sad. These, con these conversations don't go viral. I'll tell you what goes viral though. I'll tell you what goes viral. Who cheated on who? Who broke up with who? Who killed who? 
Yeah. These are the subjects that go viral. A subject like this huh, doesn't go viral. And to my sad regret, they never seem to go viral in the African-American community. What has happened to us? Has there been an epidemic, or I should say more precisely, a pandemic of dumbing down? Have we gotten so confused with the difference between what's good for us and what's not? Have we gotten so confused, so diluted as to what means us good and what doesn't mean us good to where the lines have become blurred to where we don't even know the difference between the two? That when we hear nonsense, we fail to participate. What has happened to us? You, the viewer that are watching my stream, you tell me in the chat room, if you're able, what has happened to us? What? has happened to us and what have we become that these kind of subjects simply don't interest us at all. So what I intend to do tonight in this stream, while I celebrate a young lady who gives me great joy, I mean great joy, I have a granddaughter who's so exceptionally intelligent. I see her as another Elena Wicker. No doubt. Oh, no doubt. She's going to be the exception to what we have now made the rule of dumbing down. Oh, I want to celebrate this young lady tonight. And uh, Elena Wicker, if you hear this stream, salute to you. Salute to you. And I wish all of the success that success can give where you are concerned you are going to be the difference in the future of the african-american community whether we realize it or not push forward push through all of the obstacles like you're already doing at such an early age again family she's only 12 at the time she graduated now she's 13 and she's already served an internship at nasa Huh. I'm so excited to share this stream with you tonight about this young black young lady, young woman who I've watched in interviews. I've watched how she represented herself in interviews. Oh my God. You talking about the level of maturity. You talking about someone who can carry a conversation at such an advanced mature level in many cases more high level and more mature than many of us who call ourselves adults oh i hope this stream tonight penetrates you penetrates you and causes you to look at your granddaughter look at your daughter and look at all the young ladies in your community and the young men who represent what we call the future Oh yeah, what we call the future, what we look to, th the prayers that we pray. These are the kind of individuals in our community that answers those prayers if we but knew, if we but understood what real content looks like, what real content sounds like. I'll tell you, shout out to all of my new subscribers on, uh, again, on Let's Talk About It Now. Shout out to you. As you come into the building, if you would so do, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, get the information out. This is the kind of content that we need to make go viral. Why? Because it gives hope to the hopeless. It gives inspiration to the young black male and black female in our communities who oftentimes beyond their own control are subject to the worst environmental conditions. Conditions that kill their inspiration. Conditions that kill their dreams. Conditions that kill their belief in themselves to accomplish anything outside of the community that they currently live in. Oh yeah, make this go viral. Hit the subscribe button. It's free. 
hit the share button. That's also free. And with that being said, shout out to all of my uh, Facebook uh, members. Shout out to the faithful ones. The 240 members that don't participate, I can't speak for you. But for the four or five that do participate, shout out to you. And for, like I said again, for all of the YouTube uh, subscribers that came onto my stream, that subscribed to my stream, that found value in the content that I represent on this stream, shout out to you. I am a channel that will not reflect the stupidity and the dumbing down of content that we see so full on YouTube. Oh man, you're talking about a cesspool of foolishness on YouTube with content creators. Yet they got whole thousands of people supporting their channel. It's amazing to me. What have we become? And with that being said as a backdrop, let's get into it. In celebration of Elena Anale Wicker, a 13-year-old young black woman, black young lady, who is doing so much in her short period of years that would eclipse what most of us have done in a lifetime. She's done it in just a short period of time. Huh, I will tell you. Pay attention to your children. Pay attention to your children and protect them against those that wish to be the doctor with the proverbial needle that sticks into their brain to kill their aspirations, to kill their dreams, and to kill their belief in themselves. Protect that which you have in your presence. Call your son or call your daughter. I have apologized tonight that I cannot share my screen because of technical difficulties and you know I was pushed and I was uh, I was uh, motivated to cancel tonight's stream due to technical difficulties but I refuse to do that. I believe and I'm firmly convinced that you can't say the right thing to the wrong person and you can't say the wrong thing to, to the right person. I hope that what I say to you tonight and what I share with you tonight as it relates to this young lady who has a bright future and to her parents, if you hear this stream, protect her with your life. She means something. She's special. Something is different about this young lady. She is going to make a difference going forward. All of the prayers that most of us have ever had in the black community, our prayers have gone to the cemeteries. Why have they gone to the cemeteries? Because we refuse to believe that a life lost, whether we take it or whether we abort it, is still a life lost. It's a dream unsatisfied and unrealized. This is a dream that somebody had however many years ago, however many weeks ago, however many months ago, or rather it was just a few minutes ago. Here's a dream that I'm gonna share with you tonight that's gonna make a difference in the African American community. No doubt, no doubt. And what makes it even more special, this is a black woman who has the potential of producing offspring huh. what kind of offspring is going to come from this young lady with the kind of mindset that she has with the kinds of focus that she has with the kind of drive that she has ambition that she has so far so far separated from her age it makes you think that she's a young girl being possessed by an older person. Huh. Very intelligent. I was floored. My mouth was on the floor watching some interviews of her today. To the point it brought tears to my eyes. And I'll tell you why. 
because so much potential is lost. So much potential is squandered. So much potential is tossed aside as if it doesn't matter as it relates to the future of the black community. But you know, like I said, this is a dumbing down generation. It's more comfortable to dumb down. It's like the kid who urinates in the bed when he sleeps. He lays in the wet spot and after a while it feels warm. He can't tell the difference that it's wet or whether it's just warm until the cold air from the outside he's exposed to. Then he rushes back to the what? Warm spot. It seems as though we rush back to foolishness. It's a warm spot. It's a warm spot in a generation that has been dumbed down. It's a warm spot. So I want you to sit back. I want you to relax. And I want you to listen to understand, listen to absorb this information from this young lady who is absolutely, no doubt, going to make a difference in a huge way going forward as it relates to representing what the whole world sees as a dysfunctional mass, a marginalized dysfunctional mass, better known as the black community. She breaks the stereotype and she's only one. There's some young men that I intend to do reports on who are equally as intelligent, equally as ambitious, equally as focused as this young lady. I just hope that those of you, the listeners who hear this stream are equally as hopeful, equally as ambitious, equally as supportive of this kind of individual who may be living right next door to where you live right now. Oh yeah. Who may be living across the street from where you live right now. Who may be living upstairs from where you live right now. Downstairs from where you live right now. Or in fact, who may be your own relative, your own daughter, your own granddaughter, or your own son or your own grandson. I hope that you would not continue to walk around eyes wide shut. Again, thank all of you for getting on the stream tonight. I appreciate you always, whether you come in ones or whether you come in twos, the energy by which I express my streams will be the same. If nobody came, catch the restream like many of you do. You don't come on the stream when it's live, you catch it, uh, you know, when you get time. And if that's the way you do it, thank you for your time. Something has to be more important for us that we can put away just a few minutes of our day to address and deal with and observe much less support the thing that matters and with that being said let's get right into it celebration for elena Annale wicker a 13 year old who has just been accepted into medical school <laughs> at the age of 13 which means she will graduate at the age of 16 in an interview i heard today you know what she said ladies and gentlemen she said they asked her a question. They said, when do you expect to, do you have a desire to work for NASA? She said, yes. They said, when, at what age do you expect to finally get a job at NASA? <laughs> you know what she said? <laughs> she said 16 years of age, 16. She expected to be employed by NASA and I don't doubt it one second. You gotta understand something. She was already, she already did an internship at NASA and she completed her internship and the young ladies only 13 years of age. She graduated from high school with honors at the age of 12. They asked her another question. They said, is the curriculum that you found yourself uh, experienced with in high school, was it too easy? She didn't give a long sentence. You know what she said? She said, yes, 
it was too easy. She said, was there anything challenging about it? She said, no. <laughs> if this don't get you excited, if this don't make you excited, I don't know what will. And if this don't get you excited, <laughs> I don't even want to know. But this got me extremely excited. Because for me to see something like that in the face of all of which we see in our community with black on black crime, with the uh, events in our community that causes so many of our people in our communities to OD from illicit drugs, fentanyl and every other kind of illicit drug. With this in the face of all the dysfunction that we find in every community where we live. Not that all families are dysfunctional, no, no doubt. Don't misunderstand me, but we understand and you understand what I'm talking about. When you hear things like this, it's refreshing to hear it. It's so refreshing to hear it. It's like breathing bad air and all of a sudden find yourself in a wilderness where the air is fresh now because there's so much greenery after coming from the city where there's so many factories and the air is polluted that's how refreshing this kind of story is very refreshing i don't want to delay any longer and pardon my passion because i'm so excited about this story i'm so proud of this young lady God knows, and I know her parents are more than excited about her and her abilities and her accomplishments thus far at such an early age. Thank you for all of you that stay on the stream for the duration. And thank you for those of you who choose to clock out. I thank you too. And with that being said, let's get into it. I'm going to read an article that was written by the New York Post. You know, that's not a black newspaper. They even found interest. Let's get into it. Girl 13 is youngest black student accepted to medical school. What is her age? Okay. At just 13 years of age, Elena Annalee Wicker just became the youngest black student to ever be accepted to medical school. The youngest girl from just outside Fort Worth, Texas was reading this chapter book at three and taking high school courses at 11. And she enrolled in two colleges at 12 to earn two separate degrees. But she's not focused on her age, just her potential impact. What is age? Elena asked during an interview with the Washington Post. You're not too young to do anything. I feel like I have proven to myself that I can do anything that I put my mind and heart to. The brilliant young teen has always been a few steps ahead of her peers, but doesn't think she's too different. I'm still a 13 year old, Elena insisted. Aside from her studies, she still enjoys going to movies, playing soccer, baking, and hanging out with friends. I just have extremely good time management and I'm very disciplined, she explained. Shout out to her parents. Shout out to her mom. Shout out to her dad. Good job, man. Elena is currently a college junior at both Arizona, Arizona State University and Alabama's Oakwood University, where she is earning two separate undergraduate degrees in biological sciences through mostly online courses. Now I'll tell you something about online courses because I've taken them before. It requires an inordinate amount of discipline. Why? Because an online course, you can sleep as long as you want, you can get up as early as you want, and then begin to go into your studies without an inordinate, exceptional amount of discipline. An online course, especially from a collegiate standpoint, will not be successful for you or for me, if you don't have the discipline required to do an online collegiate course. And for those of you that have ever done that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's continue. Encouraged by her family, educators, and advisors, 
she applied for early acceptance to medical school at the University of Alabama, Hearsink School of Medicine for 2024. In May, she was accepted into the program. Even though she is more than 10 years younger than the average incoming med student. <laughs> wow. And regardless of her age, the chances of Elena being accepted were already very slim, with only 7% of applicants being accepted into U.S. medical schools and only 7% of those being black students. Statistics would have said, I never would have made it, Elena wrote. This is what she said in an Instagram post sharing the exciting news last month. A little black girl adopted from Fontana, California. I've worked so hard to reach my goals and live my dreams. Mama, I made it. I could have done it. I couldn't have done it without you. You gave me every opportunity possible to be successful. You cheered me on, wiped my tears, gave me Oreos when I needed comfort. You never allowed me to settle, disciplined me when I needed. You are the best mother a kid could ever ask for. Mama, I made it, she continued. You always believed in me. You allowed me space to grow and become, make mistakes without making me feel bad. You allowed me the opportunity to experience the world. In, a, in an acceptance letter that she received from the University of Alabama at Birmingham, this was her acceptance letter into medical school. It reads like this. Dear Elena, it is a pleasure to inform you that the admissions selection committee welcomes scholars early assurance program at the University of Medicine. Congratulations. We look forward to working with you. It is a pleasure to inform you that the admissions selection committee welcomes scholars early assurance program. Again, we look forward to working with you. This was dated May the 13th, 2022. And again, to Elena Wicker, if you hear my stream, I am so proud of you, super proud of you. I am equally as proud of you as if you were my daughter, as if you were my granddaughter. And I am equally as proud of you if you were simply a young lady in the community in which I live. So proud of you. I say, keep reaching, cause sky is not the limit. Anything that signifies limit signifies how high you can go. Sky is not the limit. The only limits you have, young lady, is the limit you impose upon yourself. And I say to you, there is no limit. Keep reaching. Don't ever be satisfied with your success, no matter how much success you achieve. Continue reaching, continue climbing, continue pursuing. You are going to be the difference. You represent the future. And I'm so proud of you. Salute to Elena Wicker. Salute to you, man. This is a statement she made on her Instagram page based on the acceptance letter she received from the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Today, I'm just grateful. I graduated high school last year at 12 years old. And here I am one year later, I've been accepted into med school at 13. I'm a junior in college. I've worked so hard to reach my goals and live my dreams. Again, she goes on to say, mama, I made it and I couldn't have done it without you. I will say this to every mother, please pay attention to your daughters. Pay attention to your daughters. Don't desire to be your daughter's friend. No, no. Desire to be your daughter's source of inspiration, not your daughter's friend. At an early impressionable age, she doesn't need you to be her friend. No, not at all. She needs you to be a source of inspiration, a source of uh, limitless 
ambition? Do you have to be as successful as where your daughter is going? No, not at all. But you do have to develop eyes to be able to recognize potential ambition and you also have to have eyes to recognize prodigy when you see it. I say, get close to your daughters. Get close to your sons. Any of us who are in the impressionable years can achieve whatever we choose to achieve. And this is to any young man or young lady that hears this stream. If you accidentally stumble across this stream, understand this, that anything you want to do, you can, you can do it. And you can overcome any of the environmental conditions that you live in. You can surpass what you see in front of you every day you walk out your, out your door. Oh, no doubt. You, you don't have to be associated with nothing or anyone that goes beneath your current dreams or your current ambitions. Bypass it, sidestep it. You can do whatever you choose to do if you believe in that. If you truly believe in that and understand this, where there is no support, understand you are your best support. You second God first. When you can't find outside support, and I'm talking to young people that hear this stream, if you can't find outside support, or if you can't find internal support, meaning from your closest family members, know that God is your best support. And the second support you need is your own belief in yourself. You can do whatever you believe you can do with God's help. Again, salute to Elena Wicker. So proud of you, young lady. So proud of you. She goes on to say that even as a toddler, Elena was gifted. Her mother said this. Her name is Daphne McWhorter. Salute to you, Mrs. Daphne McWhorter. She told the Washington Post, it was just how she did things and how advanced she was. She was reading chapter books. After Elena was bullied for being a smarty, being a smarty pants early in elementary school, her mother decided to homeschool her for several years when she returned to normal schooling in the fifth grade. She continued her advanced high school level courses through a curriculum her mother created and even expanded her workload during the coronavirus pandemic. What an exceptional young lady. I was bored, Elena simply said. The high school work was so easy for me that I ended up graduating from high school at 12 years of age. She said, I love school. I love learning. I love reading, Elena continued. I have a hunger and a desire to learn and that's just always been me. From a young age, the dedicated student was particularly interested in STEM. That means science, technology, engineering, and math. And was eventually scouted to become the National Aeronautics and Space Administration youngest intern in the summer of 2021. Now let me stop right there. Ladies and gentlemen, do you understand that this is an area of education that most women avoid? It's dominated by men. The STEM programs all over the country and even outside of the United States, there's a hunger and a thirst for more female participants in this area of education. Yet most women, not just here in the United States, but all outside of the country, they avoid this area of education. And I don't know why, but perhaps maybe it's because it's dominated by a male population. Understand that science, technology, engineering, and math, this is a course curriculum in college that guarantees, guarantees an extremely high income. Oh yeah, we're not talking about black studies. If you wanna know about black studies, go to, the, go to the library. You can find out anything you wanna know about black studies without spending 150 to $200,000 a year for a, uh, 
for your for your you know your yearly uh, fee in college. You don't really need to spend that kind of money. You don't need to spend one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars in a sociology degree. No, you don't need to do that. No, you don't need to do that. And see, the tragic criminal thing about the collegiate environment is they won't tell young ladies and they certainly won't tell young men that the course curriculums you sign up for in college won't give you any return. You spend 25 and 30 years trying to pay off a college tuition for a degree that is absolutely useless. Why? You got a degree in psychology. Useless. I got a degree in business useless i got a degree in all kinds of different soft skills that you don't need a college tuition to even acquire the information in fact the same business uh the same business uh teacher that's teaching you in college they don't have a business themselves yet they're teaching you business business management and yet they don't have a business that they're managing go figure go figure but this is what's happening in large part in the black community because these colleges are about taking your money. They're about taking your ambition and squandering your ambition. Knowing that the course curriculum that you signed up for will not give you a return. Shout out to Miss Elena Wicker. Shout out to her mother for directing her course curriculum, directing her mindset into a course curriculum that can really give her a serious return. STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. She was eventually scouted to become the National Aeronautics Space Administration's youngest intern in the summer of 2021 at NASA. During her time at NASA, Elena worked in various assignments, including remote research for the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Canada. Flintridge, California. Her mentor, Clayton Turner, the director of the agency, Langley Research Center, recruited Elena after reading a news story about the budding engineer. I couldn't be more proud, Turner told the Washington Post of Elena's medical school acceptance. What's in her is wanting to help others, wanting to lift up others. She has earned several awards throughout her young life, including being a finalist for the Times Top Kid of the Year 2022. Award, but continues to focus on her main goal, helping others. Elena decided the best way to accomplish her goal professionally was by aiming to become a doctor by the time she turns 18 years of age. When I took my first biological class, I knew in that moment that this is what I'm supposed to be doing, she said. A big part of what I want to do is viral immunology. I want to advocate for underrepresented communities that lack health care. Huh, ladies and gentlemen, what I said earlier in the stream, many of the prayers that we have, they're answered through our children. She said, that she wants to advocate for underrepresented communities that lack health care. We know the most underrepresented community in this country and outside of this country as it relates to health care. We know who it is. Okay, in just case you don't know, the black community. Oh, no doubt. The most underrepresented communities that lack health care. She said she wants to advocate for them. And I believe she's going to do it. She is currently on track to complete her two undergraduate degrees by the spring of 2024 and to begin medical school that fall. Outside of her studies, Elena founded the Brown STEM Girl organization to inspire and give scholarships to young girls of color pursuing STEM. Oh, my. Let me stop right there. I got to I got to I got to repeat that again. Outside of her studies. Listen, folks, Elena founded the Brown STEM Girl organization to inspire and give scholarships to young girls of color pursuing STEM. It feels amazing to be able to create a path for girls that look like me. 
Elena said. It doesn't matter how old you are, you can do it. Don't let anybody tell you no. This is coming from the mouth and the mind of a 13 year old. Of a 13 year old. I would say to any little girl out there that's reading this, never give up on you. Never let anyone tell you that you can't do something. Because again, sky is not the limit. The only limits you have, male or female in our community. What community? I'm talking specifically to all communities, but the black community in particular. Sky is not the limit. The only limit you have is the limit you impose upon yourself. Absolutely, again, salute to Miss Elena Wicker and salute to her amazing mother, Mrs. Daphne McQuarter. And with that being said, folks, I am your host, Charles Chambliss of another episode of Let's Talk About It Now and Let's Talk About It on my Facebook group. For those of you that are in my YouTube group, again, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button, and for those of you in my Facebook group, if you have not gone to my uh, YouTube group and hit the subscribe button, do so. And hit the share button. It's titled on YouTube of Let's Talk About It Now. Not Let's Talk About It, but Let's Talk About It Now. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the share button. Show me that you support the content. And for those of you in my YouTube page, I've left in my description my email address. For those of you that want me to discuss specific topics and content, participate by sending me those messages to that email so that I can find out what you want to hear. Mind you, it has to make sense. Mind you, it has to be intelligent. Mind you, it can't be about foolishness, because if that's what it is, don't email me. I'm not going to do content on foolishness. But for those of you that want to hear content, or if you find content that you think would be interesting to share, send those content, that content, to my email address. For those of you that don't know my email address, it's let's talk with a number two l-e-t-z number two a-l-k about it 2022 at gmail.com send your request to that email of what you want me to discuss or to uh, highlight in terms of content if you find articles, send it also to that same email. Make sure that the content and the emails that you send that you desire for me to discuss, they, that they have value. That they'll help someone if I discuss it. Otherwise, all emails that don't correspond under those guidelines will be ignored. Will be ignored. And with that being said, I thank all of you again that support me on YouTube. Thank you, all of you that support me on Facebook. And this has been, again, another episode of Let's Talk About It, and let's talk about it now. With that being said, have a fantastic evening. Have a fantastic afternoon and night tomorrow. And I look forward to coming before you again on Saturday night. With that being said, folks, have a good night. God bless.